Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our online Mass. Today we are celebrating the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our main celebrant this afternoon is Father Chiesa. Let us all stand for the entrance song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we commemorate the 21st anniversary of the dedication of this church. We pray that despite the social distancing that is now imposed on us, we may come closer to support one another and fulfill the mission of our parish. As we prepare ourselves to share in this sacred meal, we call to mind our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you invite us not to cling to our self-righteousness and spurn the gift of salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you call everyone from darkness to the festive meal of lasting joy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have made provision for us, but are failing to meet the requirement of faith in Christ. For that, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord. Forgive us all our sins and lead us to the feast of eternal life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on, and on earth, earth peace, peace to, to people, people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray that we may welcome one another. God, our Father, we have come together here as family to share in the feast of your Son and our Savior. Grant, we pray, that this celebration may remain the sign of unity, joy, and love among your people, and that your love may be manifested in our eagerness to do good for others. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, of food rich and juicy, of fine strained wines. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shield enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away the people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day, it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord rests on this mountain. This is the word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Our response shall be, I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Please repeat. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing that I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. Repeat. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these things, with these, you give me comfort. Repeat. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Response. To the Lord all the days of my life. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Response. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry of living in abundance, and of being in need. I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with this glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, Glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts so that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, again in reply, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you come in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. In today's Gospel, Matthew recounts a parable which Jesus used to challenge the religious and political leaders of his day. So how did Matthew view the parable when he recorded it some 50 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus? We should also be aware that he is writing after the total destruction of Jerusalem in the year 70 AD. First of all, in today's reading from the Old Testament, the ultimate goal of life is symbolized by a sumptuous banquet of fine food and good wine provided by God for all his children. Today's gospel reading takes up this image and pictures it as a wedding banquet held for a king by his son. The invitations are sent out well in advance so that everyone can prepare and look forward to it, a wedding banquet in the king's palace. So when the day arrives and the food is ready, the servants are sent out to summon the guests, but they simply ignore the invitation. So more servants are sent out. Again, the invited guests refuse. Some refuse outright, others offer excuses, they are busy with their farm or other business. Some actually seize the servants, mistreat them, and even kill them. Here we gradually see how Matthew is building on the original parable by showing how it looks back over the history of God's relations with his people Israel. God has always been eager to invite his people to greater union with God and with one another in a great banquet. Many servants were sent to Israel. These were the prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah and many others. But the people ignored God's call through the prophets. So other messengers were sent. Matthew probably sees this second group as the first Christian missionaries sent to the Jewish people during the first years after Jesus. These servants, these Christian missionaries, too are also rejected and even put to death. By the time Matthew is writing, there have been several persecutions and martyrdoms of Christian believers. Then came the great Jewish war against the Roman Empire, resulting in the total destruction of Jerusalem in the year 70 AD. This is probably what Matthew was referring to 
when he says that the king dispatched his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burnt their town. So the king looks elsewhere for guests. He sends servants out for the third time, telling them to bring in everyone they can find. This seems to refer to the call of the Gentiles to replace the Jewish people who have rejected Jesus. These servants bring in everyone, and the wedding hall is filled with Gentiles from all over, ourselves included. Then there is the man without a wedding garment. We might wonder how everyone called so suddenly was supposed to have dressed up for the occasion. Someone has suggested that the wedding robes were handed out as people came through the palace gate. Anywhere there is one bloke there without a wedding garment, and he is promptly dismissed into the outer darkness. As we read the parable, we have to remind ourselves that it is a parable, a story of a king who gets quite upset about being ignored, burns the town of those who kill his servants, and then he himself brings harsh judgment on the man without the wedding garment. I said we have to remind ourselves that it is a story about an imaginary king, because in some ways we tend to see the king as God the Father preparing a banquet for his son, Jesus, son Jesus. And we find it very troubling to see that the king gets so angry and revengeful. So what can we take away from this parable and apply to ourselves, just as Matthew applied it to his own generation of martyrs and the destruction of Jerusalem? God is preparing a banquet for all his children and wants to see them all sitting around the table, enjoying abundant life, full of joy and happiness. All are invited. No one is excluded. Jesus himself shows us this by sitting at table with everyone, even being criticized for eating with people that were considered sinners and undesirable. He wanted us to get the picture of what God wants to do. Jesus understood life as a great invitation from God. It is a freely given invitation and needs to be answered freely. But Jesus was a realist. He was aware that the invitation might be refused. Even today, many people do not have the time or the heart to hear the call from God. They are taken up with themselves and their own interests. The man without the wedding robe represents all those who accepted the invitation but do not undergo the conversion of life required for entrance into the eternal banquet. Those who pretend to be Christians while in reality living a sinful life are no better off than those who refuse to accept Jesus in the first place. For many people, happiness lies in owning more, buying or selling more, having more things, and hopefully more security. We can keep on running away from ourselves by losing ourselves in a myriad of interests, trying to forget God and our ultimate goal of life like the man thrown out into the darkness, we have to take the responsibility for the consequences of our misbehaving. But God cannot be stopped. The invitation keeps coming, despite our refusals and our self-interest. No, God is not absent from us. We are the ones that are absent if we turn a deaf ear to God's invitations. We Christians are warned not to relax in the mere fact of having been called as God's people. As we celebrate this Eucharist, which is a symbol of the eternal banquet, let us examine our conscience and see how open we are to the invitations from God. How self-centered are we? And how open are we to others? How do we behave toward the least of Christ's brothers and sisters whom we meet every day? and of whom he says, what you do to the least of my brethren, you do to me. Invitations from God come to us through the people and events we meet day by day, today and tomorrow.
Please stand. I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended into day, hell. On the third day he rose again, again from the dead. dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence, let us Command, let us commend our petitions and the needs of the world to the Lord, who fully supplies whatever we ask. And so we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord be, be our, our life and joy. That the church may carry the Lord's invitation to the world and draw many to the feast of the banquet, even in difficult times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our life and joy that those who are not aware of God's call or have not yet welcomed the good news may open their hearts to the Lord's word and share also in his endless happiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our life and joy. That migrants, strangers, those in any kind of need may receive an appreciable welcome and experience friendship and support. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our life and joy. That through the Eucharist, we may taste the true joy and bond of love in our parish community and always prepare for the feast of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our life and joy. That the Lord who defeated suffering and death may grant consolation and strength to the sick and to those who mourn the loss of someone they love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our life and joy. We remember with gratitude the significance of the 21st anniversary of the church dedication in the lives of the foreign community and those who have been part of its history. In particular, those who returned to the Father last year Father Koichi Matsumoto, Brother Hernandez, and Father Adolfo Nicolas. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our life and joy. Lord, hear the prayers we present with faith. Grant that we may not make excuses to evade the call to the kingdom, but may respond with sincerity and share with one another all the good gifts you have enriched us with. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord God, you set here among us the table of your Son for the sick and the healthy, the poor and the rich alike. Accept the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies. You have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts. Heaven, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. At the, in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Tarsisius, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Confident in God's generosity for all, let us now pray in the words his Son taught us. Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come. thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, 
Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For kingdom, the kingdom, the power, and the, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take, you take away, away the, the sins, sins of the, the world. world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on, on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. world. Grant, Grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Those who are attending the Mass online are now invited to recite the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love, I love you, you above, above all things, and, and I, I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never, Never permit me to be separated from you. From you. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please wear your mask and leave your seat only when directed by an usher. Approach the priest or Eucharistic minister and receive the host by hand. Move to the side of the priest or Eucharistic minister. Remove your mask and consume the host. Replace your mask and return to your seat.
Let us pray. Please stand. Lord, Almighty Father, we beseech your majesty that as you feed us with the fine nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so may you make us sharers of his divine nature. Accompany us on our earthly journey until we gather around the table of the eternal banquet. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us recite the Oratio Imperata for the protection against COVID-19. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us, Give us the grace, the grace in, in this trying time, time to work for the good of all and, and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We fly, we fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. Saint Rock. Pray for us. Saint Ignatius. Pray for us. Please be seated for the announcements. Angels Group have resumed activity with a video on YouTube. The link is on the screen. St. Ignatius Church will hold a church festival this afternoon from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Registration for this event is closed. Please watch the live stream at the link shown on the screens. This event features talk sessions and an organ and prayer session. Further information is on the English website. The English Mass on October 18th, next Sunday, will be a Confirmation Mass presided by Father Hanafusa, pastor of the parish of St. Ignatius. The Sacrament of Confirmation will be received by eight parishioners. A Living Rosary will be held on October 25th, Sunday, from 5.20 p.m. to 6.00 p.m. at the church lawn. The theme is Mary, Queen of Heaven and Earth. Pray for the healing of humanity. Pray for the healing of the earth. Pray for us. Please take home your missalettes. Please leave through the designated exit doors. Please do not congregate outside the church doors or by the church gates or inside the church grounds. Please do not eat in groups in Teresia Hall. Please practice social distancing within the church grounds. Thank you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you for celebrating the Eucharist with us. May you have a great day ahead. God bless you all. God bless you, Father.
for celebrating the Eucharist with us. May you have a great day ahead. God bless us all.